Zelensky speaks by phone to China's Xi in their first call since war began. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said Wednesday that he spoke with Chinese leader Xi Jinping for the first time since the war began, calling the phone call long and meaningful but giving few details. I believe that this call, as well as the appointment of Ukraine's ambassador to China, will give a powerful impetus to the development of our bilateral relations, Zelensky tweeted. She said China would send a special representative to Ukraine for talks on resolving the crisis, state media reported. Amid the current rise of reasonable thinking and voices from all sides, we should seize the opportunity to build up favorable conditions for a political settlement of the crisis, she told Zelensky. Last month, she made a grand state visit to Russia in a show of strength, highlighting Beijing's bid for global leadership. It came shortly after the International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant for Russian President Vladimir Putin. Zelensky, who has been visited by numerous world leaders in Kiev, said previously that he has invited Xi to visit Ukraine. Beijing has positioned itself as neutral in the conflict and recently released a 12-point proposal for ending the war. Here's the latest on the war and its impact around the globe. Key Developments a Biden administration spokesman said Wednesday that the United States is glad to see that Xi and Zelensky connected in a phone call. John Kirby, the National Security Council spokesman, asked about the possibility of China brokering a negotiated settlement between Kiev and Moscow. Said that any deal needs to be one that Zelensky accepts. The only settlement that we think is worth pursuing is one that President Zelensky thinks is worth pursuing, Kirby said. German and British warplanes intercepted three Russian military aircraft over the Baltic Sea, German Air Force officials tweeted Wednesday. Two Russian Air Force Sukhoi Su-27 fighter aircraft and one Ilyushin IL-20 aircraft flew in international airspace over the Baltic Sea without a transponder signal, Germany's Luftwaffe said. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov accused the West of causing a deadlock over the Black Sea grain deal. The negotiations, he said during a news conference at the United Nations in New York, have been brought to a dead end by Western colleagues. Russia has indicated that it will not agree to extend the fragile pact that allows Ukrainian grain to be exported beyond May 18 unless its demands, which include rejoining the SWIFT banking system, are met. The grain deal has helped ease a global food crisis resulting from the war. Lavrov also alluded to the possibility of a prisoner swap for two Americans, Paul Whelan and Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich, who are detained in Russia. He referred to a number of Russians detained by the United States, telling reporters that the discussion of these matters exists, but that such work is not public in nature. He was speaking at a news conference in New York where Russia's month-long term as the rotating head of the UN Security Council is winding down. Battleground Updates Heavy, short-range combat continues in Bakhmut, according to a daily British intelligence update. The besieged area in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk region has been the site of a deadlocked battle for months. Supply lines to Ukraine's forces in Bakhmut are being complicated by muddy conditions on unsurfaced tracks, it added. Analysts at the U.S.-based Institute for the Study of War said in their latest assessment that Russian forces continue to mount ground attacks in and around Bakhmut, aided by fighters from the Russian mercenary Wagner Group. Ukraine is working with the FBI to collect evidence of war crimes, FBI Special Agent Alex Kobzinets told a conference. Ukrainian authorities are gathering phone data and geolocation information from battlefields, as well as forensic analyses of DNA samples to prove Russian war crimes. Kobzinets told the RSA Cybersecurity Conference in San Francisco, Reuters reported.